We are getting ready to take a look at a collaborative build called Ye Old Mary Battleground. This is by the members of Innova Lug. We're here at Brick Fair, Virginia, 2016. Now, uh, could you give me a little bit of background on uh, how this whole thing came together? Who are you guys? Where you guys? Uh, where'd you guys meet? Uh, what's going on here? Yeah, so a few years ago, I was into the online LEGO community. Saw a whole bunch of cool, really cool builders on the Flickr, and I invite a whole bunch of them, and thankfully, many of them said yes, and we joined, uh, formed this lug, and then many Skype calls later, and some planning, we came up with this collaborative at Brick for Brick Fair Virginia. And so what is it like to take uh, like a lug and a group of people just from like zero to uh, this big display? It's very honoring, it's very exciting, and it's a whole lot of fun along the way, because you get to make relationships, good friends, and you get to see what the whole group can do as a whole. It's awesome. Awesome, awesome. So now uh, we're going to take a look at all of the builds in display and uh, talk to the builders of these uh, wonderful, wonderful creations. But uh, before we get started, give a little bit of overall context for what we're going to be seeing. Uh, what is this? What inspired it? Uh, all that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah, so a bunch of us are castle builders, or we've done a lot of castle builds in the past. So, a few months ago we were like, okay, there's going to be nine or ten of us here, so we should do something. So Mark kind of said, all right, we're going to be coming to Brick Fair, so let's do something. So, since we're a bunch of castle builders, we're like, let's do castle. So then we decided kind of our layout, we have a green landscape for the um, grass and foliage and stuff, and then a dark tan road with some cobblestone that kind of combines all of the smaller builds into the larger picture. Awesome. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Thank you so much for sharing, David. And uh, I guess we're going to get off to the first build here. Uh, this is by Mark Erickson. Mark, what do we have? Okay, so because it's Ye Old Merry Battleground, we wanted to do a little bit of, you know, it's a battleground, but there's also civilian stuff going on around. It's, it's, a, it's a lively scene with you know, normal life along the sides. And so this is a village, and it's the red village. It's the biggest red build here, I think. And so it's, it's a little bit more peaceful because it's on the end, but um, it's also preparing for war. The queen is here inspiring the peasants, and uh, they're, they're preparing for the invasion of the blue guys. So that's what's going on here. Very cool. Now, Mark, I'm always impressed by your ability to kind of uh, build differently, if that makes sense. You uh, you build uh, kind of in the same genre, but it always looks different. Uh, how do you accomplish that? What's your what's your secret sauce? Well, um, it's I try to just always do my own thing. There's lots of styles and trends that go on, but uh, you just whenever you are building something, you just try and accomplish it as uh, efficiently and as uh, like you try something new, but you also go with uh, classics. I don't. It's like there's trends, as I said, but just keep trying something new, keep trying, you know, do your own thing. Don't uh, be swayed so much by what's going on around you, but just do your own thing. So it's just that, that kind of situation, so. Very cool. Now, could you point out just a few uh, details in this uh, yeah, scene that you've put um, together? This is an uh, inn. It's kind of a simple structure, very square, but I want something, you know, they can't all be really uber detailed. And so uh, they're all modular, but uh, this one is uh, like one solid piece. And then this over here is a blacksmith. It's not the best angle right here, but there's a guy in there working, making weapons because it's obviously a battleground. And then over here is the church. And so that was uh, because uh, a lot of our light gray pieces were used in the bigger castles. I thought we'd use up the tan pieces for the church and try and uh, utilize a different color scheme as well. So that's kind of what's going on here. So. Very smart, very smart. Wonderful build, Mark. Wonderful. And uh, coming on down here, next we're going to take a look at Bedolf Tower, also by Mark Erickson. So, Mark, uh, what's going on here? Okay, so basically, because he got some civilian buildings here, the red guys have established a tower here in order to prevent the blue guys from getting into their domain. And so, but uh, what we've got here is uh, just a little landscape and the roads. Um, in, in the design of the whole layout is that it's uh, a regular base plate and the roads lead off in different directions so that, you know, it all connects via roads. And so um, the, the blue guys have infiltrated the enemy, enemy territory and they're using a battering ram to try and take out this tower so they can reach the village and destroy the Red Realm. So that's kind of what's going on here. Very cool, very cool. Now, uh, when you're transporting this to a convention, uh, how does it break down? Do you take the whole thing and just like put it on a sheet of plywood, something like that? Uh, pretty much. We uh, Some of the bigger structures we took apart because they were modular, and then uh, a lot of this is actually, this tower just comes off completely from the base, and so that just snaps on right there. It's it's 
it's loose, it's distinct from the landscape. And then the trees we also had to take off and rebuild because they're very fragile and they yeah, didn't make the trip. Very hard to make a tree uh, transit well. Exactly. Very cool. So next, what do we want to take a look at? Back the back castle there, and this is by John Snyder. John? Yep. So this is the red castle and you've got the blue guys coming up over the walls as the red guys are being distracted out front by the jugglers performing there. Now you have a ton of tiles facing outwards. That is a super cool aesthetic. What inspired you to do that? Uh, it was actually Mark. His Mark. So it's really cool because you guys are like in, you know, you're, you're collaborating. So you inspire him and he inspires you. That's really awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So uh, describe the overall like uh, design of that castle. It looks like you have a lot of interesting angles. Yep. So then there's the gatehouse out here, of course, and the portcullis actually works. And then you got the tower and the brick-built dome, and then you got this little minaret-type tower that's just a little bit of a lookout thing to get a good view of the rest of the landscape around it. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, I can't help but notice that uh, this is by John Snyder, and this is by Isaac Snyder. So, uh, brothers? Yep. That's awesome. So, uh, brothers in the same lug, and Mark and Steven, you guys are brothers as well. Yep. So, it just is. How many brothers do we have in the slug? We have four sets of brothers, all total. Four sets of brothers in the slug. That is absolutely amazing. So, uh, do you want to take a look at this uh, Elena's bakery right here? So, what inspired you to build this? Well, again, kind of playing off the tan that Mark and John had already done, and then just trying to develop the red culture with some more civilian buildings. So it's a pretty simple bakery with baked goods that she's selling out the front window, and there's a boy trying to snitch a pie that's cooling in the back. That's a very cool little detail. Thank you. Awesome. Coming on down, what are we going to take a look at next, guys? Let's see. Andrew has a tower back there. Yeah, so um, this build I started, you know, around the time when everyone else started their builds. Um, round is always very difficult in Lego, so I did use illegal techniques to get the nice round shape. Um, I think it turned out quite well. I was very happy, uh, especially with how the roof turned out, uh, especially angling it up towards a uh, centerpiece. It's a very slick look and Ill illegal when you say illegal you mean illegal as far as Lego set designers are concerned right? Yes like some of those pieces they literally like slide in and then a piece connects behind but it doesn't actually connect to the actual base and everything of it so. Alright very cool very cool and then moving on down here uh, what do we have uh, right here? That's the falconer, so he trains hunting birds for the lords of the land, and the building was designed by the classic blacksmith set, so it's pretty similar color cues there. Very cool. Now, um, when you were building it, were you looking at uh, classic blacksmith set? Yes, I was. Yeah. Well, was it like uh, interesting to kind of look at an older Lego set and build something like new based off of it? I think that's a really cool concept. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and one of the first times I've done that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then moving on down here, we have uh, some builds by John Snyder here. Yep, so back in front of here we've got uh, the wolf pack ambushing the red guys in the rocky terrain as they go through on their way to the battle, but and then back here the forestmen are doing the same thing with a supply wagon. Now I think it's uh, really cool that you have these sort of scenes kind of speckled in throughout the, the other larger buildings here. Uh, how did you decide what to create here? Was it just sort of random and you put it together when you got here? Or was there some pre-planning involved? It's uh, who builds what, that type of thing. Uh, yeah, there was a little bit of pre-planning involved. Everybody just kind of built their stuff, and then when they got here, we just arranged everything, however it looked good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, uh, coming on down, what are we going to take a look at next? Uh, just some old ruins uh, with a road going through, and uh, their red uh, knights are transporting ballistas to the battlefront. And the ruins also suggest uh, a history that this is not the first battle, and there's a lot of fighting going on. In Ongoing this. conflict, right? Yeah. Now, what inspired you to build this, Paul? Uh, just wanted to do a castle and a lot of terrain. So did you take inspiration from like real castles, other Lego castles? Uh, what, what kind of uh, set you off? Uh, just a lot of uh, from the all nine community. Very cool, very cool. Now, point out a few uh, details uh, in there that you find uh, like really, really, uh, maybe they were hard to do and you're really proud of them, something like that, something cool. Uh, I really like the uh, the uh, texturing where it's where it concaves in to the left of the, on the left of the castle. That was fun to do. Just the rock work. I really like to do rock work. 
and just the ruins to the left, uh, you can see there's a path that just keeps on going that there's suggests that there's more beyond there. That is very cool. A wonderful scene. Great composition. Awesome work. Thank you. Very cool. And then uh, coming on down, what are we going to take a look at next? This looks like we've got a farm right there. Mark? Okay, so um, one of the things you want to do in the original idea was like two sides, obviously red and blue, and uh, it would kind of escalate as it went to each end, and in the middle would be this neutral area where it would be battle area. And so one of the things was a neutral farm. It's, it's not siding with either side, but it's hoping to stay peaceful, and thankfully, None of the soldiers have tromped over their tro uh, crops or anything yet, so uh, they're doing pretty good over here. So that was one of the first ones we did, just to kind of explore the idea of the dark tan road and the green surrounding landscape. So, so. Sort of like a case study build almost. Exactly, but it ended up turning out really good, so a little. it's good to have, again, more lively, more than just guys, a huge battle. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some little uh, more s detail. softer details. Exactly. More details, more a uh, little more uh, character. So. That's awesome. So coming on down, what are we going to take a look at next? This, uh, probably this dragon scene here. So that's another thing we're just trying to have more neutral area between the two realms and uh, one thing we thought would be cool to be include my brother's dragon is called Stravgi and it's a big land dragon and it actually won a contest on Flickr featuring uh, just like the, which dragon was the best and actually won first place so we're, that's we're, awesome so we were very glad to feature that here I, I built the landscape but Steven's dragon is all his so. an already award-winning dragon yep and so there's also more dragons from the guy who hosted the contest further down one it was a gift and one was purchased from him so you'll see those later on so. that's awesome very cool very cool and I love the the trees here are these official Lego elements or no no I, I'm, I'm glad you called me out on that but um they're actually alt bricks they're very much like Lego but they're different they're a little bit cheaper and uh, they're a little bit easier when you're doing a larger display like this. So Very cool. And lots of cool colors there, too. Yeah. Very nice. And uh, next, what are we going to take a look at? Andrew? Okay, so this mock, as you might notice, doesn't have a mock card. That's because I built this within, like, the last week before coming. So I didn't want to register it and not be able to finish it. Uh, turns out I was able to finish it, so that was cool. And so I really like the way the roof turned out again. <laughs> uh, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So as you can see, it's got that one angle slope and then it goes over the top. And then I added some sand green moss because sand green is really got a bunch of that at the pick a brick wall. Um, that was amazing. That stuff kind of just randomly showed up at pick a brick walls all across the country and people were like, yo man, did you hear that the sand green is on the pick a brick wall? You got to go down and get some of that. Was that how that happened for you? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I, did, I did not get any sand green, so I'm a little bit bitter, but go on. And then the, um, the black cones, I actually borrowed also that idea from another build later in the collab, because that was finished before, so also kind of tying in with the uh, architecture. Super cool. I really, uh, it has a, a very, very distinct aesthetic to it, so very nice. And I think that sand green really sets off the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Very cool. So uh, next, what are we going to take a look at? Watermill. Watermill. All right. What do we have? A watermill in the back, and the wheel would actually spin, but it would kind of knock the studs around. And the river was actually a pretty late addition when we realized that a water feature would be very nice. So we decided to go with irregular reddish-brown banks to show where the edge of the river would be. And we have a bridge down in here, and then just loose studs to show the water. So is that technique called parts dumping? Yeah, I guess you could call it that. And it's a pretty sophisticated part stumping too here because as we can see, the table kind of changes heights, but we didn't uh, let that stop us. You turned that into, it looks like a waterfall sort of a thing, yes, right? Yes, we did. And so are they, uh, there, there's an octopus and they appear to be going away from the waterfall area, but towards the octopus? Yeah, the little boy has caught an octopus, but the uh, older guy is not too thrilled. Terrible, terrible stuff. Very cool, very cool. So next, what are we going to take a look at? Take a look at the stable on the opposite side, which has got a bunch of blue soldiers marching out to fight a group of red that somehow snuck in behind. Okay. And then when you're designing a building like this, uh, what do you do to uh, be like inspired to find uh, sources to build from, if you will? I often do look through older castle builds on Flickr, uh, especially for layouts. I try to avoid just a simple square and at least add some additions. Very cool. Now, if you were going to give a piece of advice to someone looking to set out and build something like that, because that looks like it's not the biggest thing in the world, and it might be deceptively simple if you're going to have no experience, I guess, building anything like it. What's, uh, what's a, a sticking point for something like that? 
It is nice to start small and go up from there. And yeah, I think avoiding just a simple rectangle and adding just like a shed or something off the side is good. And changing the roof slopes is also helpful. Very true, very true. And I see, are you using minifigure, uh, collectible minifigure base plates? Is that what those are? Yes, they are. And it's an unusually well-suited piece to roofs. I, I think it's, uh, you know, studs in the middle, tiles on the side. It works really well. Yeah, it does give a good shingled look. Awesome. Great work. Good stuff. Uh, and next, what do we want to take a look at? It looks like uh, you have a bridge yeah, here as well. You have the bridge. Um, the bridge has got a big fight going on because that's the easiest way to get across the river and naturally both sides want to advance onto the enemy's territory. Very nice. Now, uh, it looks like you have plates facing outwards. Yes, um, I do. Was that a snot technique that was hard to kind of execute? It was actually pretty easy. The whole sides of the bridge are snot, and then up top I used brackets to switch it back to studs up so I could edge it. Okay. Very nice, very nice. Super slick. What are we going to do next here? Here we have another farm, red farm, and outside you've got the pig got out of his pen, the farmer's chasing it away, and of course the little boy is very amused at that. And this also goes along the riverbank, and it's got the reddish brown. Now when people build uh, roofs like this, and uh, it's like, you know, uh, plates and they angle them, uh, a lot of times they have an awkward gap at the top, but you have filled it in. What, what is, uh, what's in there and how is that attached, or is it attached? It is not actually attached. It is just um, four long tan sticks. And you just set them right in, and it works really nicely to fill That's it something in. really good to keep in mind. So, yeah, just fill it up, put those little, uh, other, what are they, almost like the wizard, the uh, yeah. Harry Potter, kind of yeah. like four like four long bar or something like that. Yep. I've also seen people use like the, it's like the plate with the half stud rim on it. You know oh, what I'm talking yeah. about? Yep. To make the same. Very cool. Very cool build. All right, moving along. What do we have? So this is a dock. I actually built this the day before uh, coming up here, or actually coming down here to uh, Brick Fair, um, just to add another thing to the build. Um, I was quite happy with how the Lego string and sails turned out as they're rolled up. And so, yeah. And is that two boats put together? Yeah, I kind of copied the idea from uh, the Lord of the Rings, or the Hobbit set. It's very effective, isn't it? Yes. It's awesome. <laughs> awesome. And then coming on down, what are we going to take a look at here? Got a couple big battles going on. One right on the riverbank with red against blue, of course, and then another just next to it with the red. Looks like it might be advancing through blue a bit. Very cool, very cool. And uh, Joseph, what do you have here? Uh, I have the Cerulean Cathedral. Um, Lots like, of lots of interesting rock technique. Like, it looks like a very interesting wall there. Thank you. Yeah, I've been trying to test out a new rock technique for me, and I'm liking it, so that's what I've been doing for my last couple builds. But yeah, unlike most of the guys, most of my builds are kind of peasant life and just civilian, so I didn't have many uh, warriors to spare, so I decided to do something more peaceful and showing the, the life of the... Uh, the people of the the city. Very cool. Now, what uh, what kind of uh, set you off to build this? What what was the inspiration? Well, uh, when I was looking at the list of all the other mocks that the other guys were bringing, I didn't see any religious buildings, and um, turns out that I missed both of them. So, uh, <laughs> I thought I was being uh, creative and original. Yeah, exactly. Clever and innovative by uh, making a, a chapel, but it didn't turn out <laughs> as such. But hey, I still like it, and uh, I like how it turned out. It's all good. It's all good. That's all good. And uh, coming on down here, what are we going to take a look at next? David, this looks like something that you did. Yes, this is uh, Simon's Covert. So the main feature that stands out, of course, in this build is the rock that's on that slight angle relative to the rest of the scene. And I think that really sets a dynamic layout for the whole thing and uh, pretty challenging to get the smooth angle back in transitioning back into the normal stud alignment making sure there's not uh, noticeable gaps liberal uses of uh, like wedge plates wedge plates and some things are just attached and then rotated on one stud and then make sure you have like black bricks behind it so it fills in everything definitely now what type of tree is that in the back there the white ones are there? Just like eucalyptus trees or something like that, or like, uh, that's a very, very unique, I've never seen any tree, Lego tree like that, uh, ever. Yeah, um, I have a Lego hockey set from years back, and I know there are like people who did like birch trees with, you know, white bricks or whatever, but I saw these really long Technic pins 
or rods. So I'm like, hey, I can use that for the trunk of the tree and then attach some white and light gray technic elements and then stick some leaves on there and be a, like a nice uh, tree that has a thinner trunk to it. I was really happy with how those trees turned out. Very cool, very effective, wonderful build. Thank you. And then uh, what are we going to take a look at next? Monaster. And so uh, you guys are brothers, right? Yes. So brothers, uh, what is that like to kind of have the, the building brothers? Uh, what's the, what's the dynamic? Fun. Yeah. It is a lot of fun. Um, it makes building a little bit more fun. It's like, hey, you want to go down to the Lego area and build for a while? And I'm like, sure. Now, now you say that. Do you feel similarly? Yes, I do. <laughs> you do? All right. Okay. Very good. Very good. Now let's take a look at this build. What do we have? All right. So this is a build I had actually built. Uh, before we officially uh, made this collab, I was building it for something else, and then they're like, hey, let's do this collab. And so I was like, okay, um, I could just switch out some of the colors in the stained glass and also the dome pieces and just make it fit with the build. Um, I actually do have an interior for this one. It's a little tricky to get to. Um, we'll just leave it be. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, one thing I do want to point out is the dragon on top. That is actually by Aaron Newman. Uh, you can check him out on Flickr. He does really cool dragons and stuff. And Aaron, is Aaron Newman out of the Pacific Northwest by any chance, or no? I, so where is Aaron Newman? Uh, that sounds familiar. Uh, I wish I would. Uh, oh, well. Very cool dragon, though. Super, super cool dragon. Yes. All right, and next, what are we going to take a look at, Joe? Back here is the Forestman camp. You've probably seen them popping up in a few places, so that's their hideout back there. So they got the archery range with the targets. And now, is that from the classic Forestman sets, by any chance? Uh, it is inspired by that, but it is completely original than that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love the, the texturing of the landscape. It, it, I feel like a lot of these builds, it's almost like the, the build is important, but it's almost as important the, the landscaping work that you've done. So yeah. how, how well, is it hard to build where landscape is a priority? What, does it, is it different than just building buildings? Um, for me, I actually personally like building landscapes a lot, so it's not too hard for me, but... Um, lots of plates? Yeah, lots of plates. Plates are key for a landscape. Very cool, very cool. Wonderful build, and I, it's just so cool to see, like, the, you see he's like, hanging up there in the tree, uh -huh. getting ready to, I guess, what, kill someone? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Very cool. And uh, you have another build here. Yep, this is a Blue Watchtower, and around the back here... We have some forestmen sneaking up, ready to ambush the blue soldiers in the top of the tower. And this dragon is also made by Aaron Newman. So Aaron Newman's dragons making their appearance here uh, on the uh, the collaborative layout. Very cool. Now, uh, John, are you responsible for that uh, wacky color tree? Yes, I am. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that's official Lego elements, right? Yep. That is Very cool. Friends or elves? I think it might be elves. Elves. Very cool. Very cool to see that. So coming on down, what do we have to look at next? Isaac? We have a small blue manor that is being completely flooded by red soldiers. It does not look good for the blue team. I don't think they're going to win. No, probably not. Very cool. And you are integrating sand green once again. Were you able to acquire these sand green parts on the pick wall? Yes, I was. And this Very fortunate. My first build using them in a castle mock. That's awesome. How were you able to get? A one full cup of one by two plates and two cups of one by one bricks. That's awesome. And so they're good for building castle, town, pretty much anything that's not, I mean, maybe even space. Everything, pretty much. Yeah, just about anything. That's awesome very cool build uh, do you think uh, do you think that there's anything about this like you wish you knew before you started like uh, some sort of technique or uh, style that you wish you had had like a little bit of Intel on before beginning uh, I think it came together pretty well it was a little touch and go I wasn't sure how the texturing with the sand green would go at first uh, I think the smaller patches worked out well for this one although if I did it again I might try bigger sections to simulate moss definitely very cool very cool and uh, next jump over here this is a little beekeepers cottage with a couple honey hives and a lady bringing in the honey it's a very small build but a very effective build and once again the minifig uh, base plates as uh, roof pieces yes. super slick yep they were very useful and so uh, what brought you around to building this this is like a oddly specific uh, build i feel was it inspired by anything in particular or? uh yeah i was looking through a build list on classic castle for medieval building ideas and saw a beekeeper and thought that would be really fun that is awesome that is awesome so if you're ever in doubt or in need of things to build uh, go to classic castle yes they get have a, a whole ideas list for medieval themed builds that's awesome that's awesome very cool very cool and uh, it looks like we only have a few left. What are we going to take a look at next? Yeah, we have this Cordington Courtyard here, 
which was uh, quite a lot of uh, fun to build. And I used a very similar texture style to the build that Isaac made that you just showed a minute ago. And uh, I started this build off with those columns, which turned out really cool because it, they're six, it's a six-sided column with tiles that all match up real nice. And then I used large tire, um, large wheel pieces for the base top of the columns. So that kind of, those four columns kind of determined the scale of the whole thing. And I actually was short a few of the wheel pieces and then, but since Andrew and I have the same Lego room there, it's like, hey, I need these. And so, <laughs> so that's another benefit to building with, uh, building with the brothers, right? You know, you can just go and say, hey, do you have? Right, because so you don't have to go to BrickLink right away. You can first see if your brother has one and say, I need this. That's awesome. Now, I think it's particularly bold to use such a like an interesting roof technique um, when you have like an inside curve there or an inside, I guess, what is that, a concave uh, like slope or something like that? I'm not sure the exact. Yeah, I'm, not uh, sure the, I'm not sure of the term either, but yeah, that roof was annoying and but also very rewarding at the end when it all came together. I was looking at pictures for a uh, courtyard roof pieces on Google and um, I saw this type of roof where all the roofs come in there's no tall part of the uh, the rock wall or the stone that comes up it's all roof at the top and all angles in and those angles were just crazy to get but it was turned out real nice it did it turned out very nice indeed a wonderful build and uh, to kind of wrap us out here I guess we will be taking a look at this uh, is it far win or far ween? Fair, fair, fair win. Fair win. I was wrong on all accounts. That's uh, okay. Steven, what do we have here? Well, we have, I think, to safely say, my largest creation to date. Um, it is eight story high keep. It's based off of sort of a, I don't know, German, Romanian esque architecture. I, um, during the CCC a few years back, I did a castle with lots of spires and I fell in love with them. So I wanted to add a lot of them to this build as well. Um, I think we can safely say it's the biggest creation here um, for the collab. Definitely not the largest footprint. That honor goes to Paul. Um, but yeah, I think it turned out very nicely. Um, and uh, it was, it's pretty funny. Actually, this build, I, I usually when I build, I've got a great idea of exactly what I want to make. But in this case, not the case. I winged the whole thing. I had no idea what I was doing. The rocks came together very nicely. but. I think everything was remade at least twice. So. That's amazing. Now, I heard something a while back, and I thought this to be true, but they said when a castle builder just goes out and gets a ton of like light blade, they basically have parts forever. Uh, do you find that to be the case? Like, you, you think it's like amazing that you can reuse the same parts so effectively over time? Well, uh, as far as if they could ever have enough parts, the answer is a definite. No, no. no definitely not. But uh, yeah, I had to find a lot of parts for this. Uh, thankfully, uh, we've been stockpiling for quite a long time, so I didn't have to dig too hard. Very cool. Now this is a massive build. Could you point out some of your favorite parts? Okay, uh, definitely. Um, my favorite part is, um, I think actually, let's see, favorite part, holy moly. Uh, There's a lot going on. Yeah, it would have, have to be the main keep. Um, it's definitely my favorite part of the entire thing. Uh, this larger extension here, uh, this is all a spiral staircase, uh, but it starts at the second floor. The rest of the spiral staircase is um, on the other side, just under the balcony. And uh, that goes up only about two floors. It's an eight-story structure, and uh, it comes apart into uh, ten pieces for transportation. That was very important. That's amazing, amazing, amazing feat of Lego building there. Yes. Wonderful work, Sue. Thank you. Um, it also has about a 90% interior, roughly. Uh, anything Tudor work, there's two structures that are Tudor. Um, those do not have interiors, unfortunately. Um, but as for the rest, the entire thing has um, interiors, and I think. Oh, actually, one of my favorite aspects about this build, not so much like, it's as a whole, really, because a minifig could reach every single point in this entire castle with very little difficulty at all. That's awesome. Yep. Awesome. And so to finish us out, uh, if people want to learn more about you guys, Innova Lug, uh, what you guys displayed here, where should they go? Primarily, they should go to InnovaLug.com. That's where we post a whole bunch of things. We post our flash mocks or collaborations like this. So yeah, go to our website at novalog.com. And then we also have a whole bunch of social media where you can go, um, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Instagram, all of that. So it's, it's a journey and it's a lot of fun working with all these guys. And we look forward to uh, all the things that we'll do in the future. Awesome. And so guys, thank you so much for sharing with me. Wonderful work. Thank you. Thank you.